entirely uh, in charge. And in 1872, he builds a, a refinery in Liverpool. In 1877, he opened a refinery in Silvertown in, uh, in the East End, in London, which is still involved in producing uh, refined sugar. Um, and this particular Henry Tate became a very generous man, but only generous to England. Not generous to the people who are actually producing the sugar in Caribbean. None of it. None of it at all. Right? He didn't think that they, you know, they were worth it. I presume we don't really know worth actually giving money to. But anyway, he gives, it says here, um, eight, 80,000 pounds um, he gave. Uh, and if you got Tate, um, Tate Britain. Uh, he gives money to all kinds of other, other places. Uh, he builds, you know, he gets built the, the libraries here, his statue is not far away, and so on. And he's knighted in 19, sorry, in 1898. Um, we must say that he did refuse uh, knighthood at least two or three times until uh, the Queen wasn't happy with him. So he accepted it. And uh, he was uh, Sir, Sir Henry. So he lived well, and he, he was one of the richest men at the time, multimillionaire. That's the thing, on refined sugar, which meant that he got from the Caribbean the cheapest sugar you can think of. The cheapest sugar. In other words, it never really had a, a, a price rise. The fact that the men and women, and by the way, women work as, as heavy as men. That's the point about it. In, in, in the fields, right? And therefore, eight, um, one shilling a day was happening even before 1838. I read that. 1838. In other words, that was your minimum wage. What's the minimum wage, uh, Miss? The Chancellor says it's going up. By 20p. By 20p. Okay. He now don't know how many. 60, That is what they're supposed to be. Um, but then you also have, have something called what? The living wage. Right? But the ancestors weren't actually um, on the living wage. They were on the minimum wage, which in most cases was just about subsistence level or below. Because many a time we, 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 we read that the, um, the men and women got less than a shilling a day. And that happened, you know, until 1938. Right? From 1838 with emancipation to 1938, 100 years, it was one shilling a day. Could you imagine? Mm -hmm. And Henry Tate benefited by that mm -hmm. throughout. He benefited by low wages, he benefited by the enslaved Africans in Brazil and in Cuba. And by the way, Cuba really didn't have any sugar going on, really, um, until after emancipation. If you look at, at, the, um, at, at the figures, because of pumping Africans into, uh, into Cuba. And not only that, after the First World War, because of this, some of the Caribbean soldiers were, they say, rebellious, they sent them to Cuba. Not back home. Not back home to the Guyana or Barbados or, or, or Jamaica, because they were so rebellious, they thought, well, these guys are going to go home and make trouble. Send them to Cuba in the Cape Fields. And that's exactly what happened. We have the evidence uh, for that. But let's come to um, Adam uh, Lyle. Now, he is he that, you know, the one that we don't know much about, but he's, he was Scottish. Um, he, 12 years old, he became an apprentice in a lawyer's office. Um, he joined his father uh, in the, the cooperage business. But eventually, he developed shipping. And he was conducting a shipping business Shipping raw sugar from the Caribbean and elsewhere throughout the whole, uh, all around the world, as, as well as the Far East. Uh, and again, he became a very, very rich man indeed. That's the thing about him. And we don't know how um, a lot of the things that this guy says in his thesis, he says that a lot of the books were actually destroyed by, by Tate. Destroyed books. So he couldn't. He couldn't give you a good analysis of the accounts, right? But he made a lot of money. You see, I mean, even I had an email from Tate, um, Tate and Lyle today, and they were saying to me that um, they're sorry. I asked them for information about um, you know, trade with Cuba and Brazil. He said, um, well, he, they don't have that. Uh, they they um, possibly 
are somewhere in the archive somewhere else. Because, by the way, these two men only, well, came together, of course, they were both dead, when Tate and Lyle was formed. So when you think about Tate and Lyle, they only existed in 1921. Tate and Lyle existed only in 1821, not before. And I'll tell you why. When the war broke out, Britain nationalized sugar. Can you imagine? Nationalized sugar. Like nationalizing oil. That's what it did. Because of the war. Sugar was so important, a commodity, that they felt, well, Henry Tate, well, his son, because he, he died in, in, in the 1890s, and they both, they both died. So the sons were operating the business. And therefore, the government took the sugar away from them. Not only them, you had many other refine, refiners, you know. They weren't the only ones. Right? You had dozens of them refining sugar. So eventually, uh, Britain took it away 1914, 1915, 16, 17. And Abraham Lyle's son was co-opted into the government to run the sugar, <coughs> distributing sugar, right? And actually, uh, what's the word they use? Um, no, it's the word uh, rationing sugar. They rationed the sugar during the war. Oh yeah, sugar was important. It's like oil. You ration the oil. You don't just say, put the oil in, you know, on, 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 the, you know, on the road. No. You ration, and that's exactly what happened. So after the war was ended in 1921, the two businesses came together and became Tate and Lyle. 